Jesus here tonight. How many of you love, how many of you are radical lovers of Jesus? Come on now. I know about you, but I want more of him every, every, every day. Want to get lost in his glory? How many of you want to get lost in his glory tonight? You know, Lord's been challenging me. I've been just about not just a little glory, not just something tiny, weeny. But He said it's time for a generation to walk with a Shekinah glory. You know, which shook the Solomon's temple. I believe God's raising an army who's moving in that glory, who's moving in that power, who's moving in that intimacy. Even tonight, if you're here, it's because you long for that. You long for that kabod. You long for the weighty, weighty glory which just falls down from heaven. You can never be the same. Our lives can never be the same. When we get wrecked with the glory, even tonight, He wants to wreck us with His glory tonight. He wants to wreck us with His fire tonight. Just forget about yourself. Forget about everything else tonight. It's between Jesus and you. It's, it's the glory where a priest could not enter the temple. And God wants to pour a latter day glory upon the house of the Lord. Oh, we don't need to minister because when he comes, he just shakes things. He's looking for that generation tonight. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Just want to quickly welcome you tonight. It's awesome to have Jake and his team and we thank you for coming. Let's give it out to Jake. And his team, thank you guys. We honor you. We, we love Jake. How many of you love Jake? Wow. <laughs> Woo! Father, I desire also whom you have given me, may they be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Verse 22 in John 17 says, The glory that has give, been given to me, I give to them. For what purpose? So that 
Everybody just say, so that. Like, what's the purpose of glory? See, we can use the purpose of glory to have like a really good meaning, but here's what Jesus is about to tell you what the purpose of his glory manifest on your life is for. It's okay if you want to keep giving. You can keep giving. I feel like you need to know that there's financial breakthrough for all of England. I feel like keep the boxes up here the whole time. I really feel this. Because there's two, I really felt like the Lord gave me a word. We're going to sing a couple more songs. Don't worry. We're not, we'll finish with some music. Okay? That's the easy part. Getting to the music part is easy. Getting to like the reality of how we carry the music and what we're declaring out these doors, that's a whole nother world. Look, I've been in a lot of meetings and a lot of stadiums and a lot of arenas and a lot of homes and a lot of churches where the presence of God comes and manifests tangibly. But then we have to keep inviting people back because they don't know how to carry it beyond the meeting. Like everybody wants to get into the room and get on their face and get in the meeting. And I think a lot of people end up coming to all the meetings because they're afraid it's going to show up when they don't go to the meeting. You know what I mean? Like they're afraid that like they have FOMO, fear of missing out. You know, like the church is in constant FOMO, fear of missing out on a constant basis. Like, oh, man, I better make the meeting because this might be the time that it actually happens. And then they're like not at the meeting. And they're like, oh, I'm glad it didn't break out. What? Because you weren't there? Like, are you kidding me? This isn't about us or about you or about when, the, when God decides to come. This is about the fact that he already come. He has already come. He has already poured out his glory. We can ask for it tangibly, but we have to carry it out physically. We actually have to create an environment by which we can carry his glory into every place we go beyond this, this room. And I love that Jesus says, he's like, he's like, let me give you, I love the Bible. <laughs> if you don't get anything else, please go home and read your Bible more. Like, all right, just please go home and read your Bible more. Like, this is the living word of God. We actually get to, to get into the word and seek his face. And as we seek his face, we become more generous. We become more kind. We become more loving. Everybody's wanting the fruit to be the guy that you prayed for down the street. That's not your fruit. There's only one fruit. That's the fruit of the spirit. You know, you could pray for the guy down the street and still be a jerk. The goal is to not be a jerk anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you could still have no character and no integrity and lay hands on people on the street. What God is looking for is the internal integrity and character of a human being who can carry the manifest presence everywhere they go. I am waiting until I can walk into rooms and people just, they fall out. Why? So that I have a good story? No, I want people to have an encounter with God. I am... I'm so hungry for people to have an encounter with the living God that doesn't mean they have to come to the meeting, but that the meeting comes to them. I love that throughout all of space and time, all of history, God decided he would show up. Have you been to that chapel down in the center of London? I don't know what the chapel's called, but it's the one with the bent lines, and it's got the oval inside. So at the back of the chapel, have you seen this? Do you know what it's called? Anybody know what it's called? We went there this morning. It's right by the it's it's right by the museum. Okay, it's right. We went and looked through. We just got inspired. But inside this chapel, there's a giant glass window. Okay, and the glass window is got all these lines on it. But inside of it, it's bent into an oval. And I was listening to a guy teach on it. Inside this chapel is this oval that's kind of bent the lines. Can you see what I'm saying? So the lines are now curved so that there's an oval in the middle of this giant window. I mean, it's half the size of the church, this window is. All these lines then bent out in the middle like, there's, like something came through. And the guy said that the lines are to represent time and space and God breaking through time and space. And now this, that'd be beautiful. It's like, oh, that's such a beautiful window. Except when the sun breaks in the morning and comes just to the right light, to in the right space, it comes through that oval, through the entire church, and out on the front steps of the church is a giant block of stone. And carved out of this giant block of stone is a little baby, and it says on that giant block, the word became flesh. Now, do you see what I'm saying? 
Dawn breaks on another day. Bends through space and time. Light comes through the window to illuminate the reality that God has not left you alone. Wherever you're at, whatever you're dealing with, financial, whatever it is, whatever you're dealing with today, family, marriage, kids, job, business, church, ministry, whatever it is, God broke through space and time to come meet you where you are at. Here's the best news of the whole thing. The best news of the whole thing is his mercies are new. How many mornings? Some mornings, one morning, two mornings, maybe a couple mornings when you feel like praying in the morning. How many mornings is it that his mercy is new? Here's the crazy part. Where is that passage in scripture? I told you, go home and read your Bible. Most people think that it's in a song or it's in a proverb. That would be really awesome. It's actually in the book of Lamentations, the book of Lament. Did you know that? Smack dab in the middle of the book of lamenting, you know, sorrow and sadness, written by probably Jeremiah the weeping prophet. You guys, do you understand that there, there can be such a glory on your life that you will sleep through the storms? Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about John 17. We're going to go back there. Because there's a purpose for his glory. There is a purpose for the weight of his glory that he's putting on your life, your family, your marriage, and this nation. Specifically, this nation right now. Specifically, the nation that you are in. Not just Europe as a whole. I think he's targeting, I think he's targeting England. And this is the first part of my prophetic word before we get to Lamentations 3. There was two words the Lord I really feel gave me before we came here. You guys, do you understand? This wasn't a trip to uh, England. This wasn't a trip to England. This was actually a trip to Ireland. But I knew that I had to land in London. And when I was supposed to land in London, I knew we were supposed to go through a little tour and just declare a few things. I just didn't know what they were yet. Because <laughs> sometimes you have to touch the land. And the moment I touched the land, I was like, oh, I get it. And the first part of the word is simply this. That he's moving on you because your history is to mother and father the nations of the earth. Do you understand that your history is different than my history? Your land is different than my land. See, my land, what my land was birthed out of was you. How many other nations were birthed out of this nation? How many nations did you cover? Did you care for? Did you protect? Did you defend before they could defend themselves? You defended them. You brought provision. You brought resource. You brought access. That was this nation. So much came from this land to birth nations all over the earth. And you think you might want to you know, move to the States or something. No. God did not make a mistake where he puts you. He actually is raising up moms and dads again in this land. He's looking for mothers and fathers who will take care of, provide for, and build the nations of the earth. He's ready to send out moms and dads from this place again. This is not about age. You can be 12 years old and be a mom or a dad to some. But I think he's going to, I really believe that an outpouring of his presence, an outpouring of his glory is coming to this nation for the sake of finding mothers and fathers who do what we just said. They won't give up just because it got hard. Because his mercy is new every morning. He's already broken through space and time. And his mercies are new. How, how often? Here's what it says. It says, the steadfast love of the Lord, this is in Lamentations 3, verse 22. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says, the, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who what? Wait. Why are we singing earlier, don't give up? Because everybody wants it right now. You guys, anybody been a Christian for more than five minutes? We realize this is a process. And we're like bummed out about the process until we realize the process is to build up your strength. See, okay, so if I go to the gym and I grab this microphone and I start working out. 
100 reps, bro. <laughs> Why does that not work? Because it's what? It's too light, so it doesn't produce any what? Resistance. See, we're trying to navigate getting around resistance. God is the one who's actually putting the resistance on you. Why? You're like, that sounds awful. No, 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 no. He's trying to build your strength. Because if I keep working out with this, I'm not getting any stronger. I gotta find something bigger. I gotta find something heavier so that when I work out, I'm gaining strength. So life, God puts pressure on our lives. It's not the devil. Half of it is not the devil, I promise you. Some of it is your bad decisions, and that's okay. We bless you. There's loads of grace, okay? But lots of it is God putting pressure on you, and you're like, why? That doesn't sound like a very nice thing to do until you get in a meeting like this, and you go, God, give me your glory. And he goes, I can't. You didn't lift enough weights before you got here. Because what does glory mean? What does glory mean? It actually is translated weight. Did you know that? Glory literally translated means weight. So you're avoiding all these trials. God, get out. God, no. This is not this is the devil. I rebuke you. Oil, oil, oil. You know, I'm going to, I'm kicking the devil out. And God's like, that's not the devil. It's me. It's me. I'm not mad at you. I'm just putting enough pressure on you so that you can get stronger. So when you walk into the meeting, you can go, God, give me your glory. And he goes, yes. Boom. And you can carry it out of the room. It's why most of us can't carry it out of the room because we don't have enough strength. So it hits us. Whoa, whoa. But when we get out of the room, nothing changes. That doesn't mean this wasn't real. That was real. Guess what happened? Weight came on you and you couldn't carry it out of the room. What happens when you walk into the room and go, glory, come. And God goes, yes. And you go, now watch what I do with it when I leave this room. See, we're avoiding things because, see, here's the, here's the issue. Why am I telling you all this in context of Lamentations 3? Because that's verse 22. Would you like to hear what verse 1 says in Lamentations 3? I am a man who has seen affliction. I'm a man, I'm a woman who has seen hard things and been through real stuff. That's how this starts. Lamentations 3. I am a man who has seen affliction. I love it because your affliction will eventually become your conviction. L let me put it this way. Look at See, here's what's awesome about the weight of glory when it comes on your life. Your circumstances are irrelevant now. Hard is irrelevant. I mean, Jesus endured the cross for what? The joy set before. So you can't see joy set before you if you're still worried about the circumstances you're living. Right? You can't find joy in what's to come if you're so stressed out about what's happening right now. And it's simply because we haven't seen the vision of what Jesus is doing down the road in our lives, getting us to become carriers of his glory. Just... We are partaking, participating, carriers of the actual tangible weight of God everywhere we go. This is great news. But see, some of us, we're like, I remember the story of Paul and Silas. And they were in prison, brothers and sisters. And when they were in prison, what did they do? They sang a song to the Lord. And when they sang a song to the Lord, the place was shaken. And guess what happened? The doors fell off the prison. Praise God. That's usually where we end the story. Praise God. Hallelujah. You were in a prison. Sing the song of the Lord. It's going to shake the place. The doors are going to fall off. Woo! Freedom! The problem is that's like halfway through the story. The rest of the story is the prison doors fall off. The guard that's supposed to be guarding all of those inmates, but so that you can have power in the midst of it. See, he doesn't heal you around your pain. He heals you. And by the way, P.S., just so you're aware, remember the cross? He will never ask you to do he didn't do something first. 
So that's why Lamentations 3 says, dude, I'm a man who's seen affliction. This is, we think it's Jeremiah. I'm a man who has seen affliction. And then he says this later on. He says, I have forgotten what happiness is. <laughs> so I say my endurance has perished. So my hope, so has my hope from the Lord. But this I will call to mind, he says. He says, my, you guys, a verse earlier, he said, my hope is gone. Guess what the next verse? But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. He's not confused. He's you and me. We're looking at our circumstance and going, I don't see anything. But guess what he sees? Guess what the next verse is? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They're new when? When the sun gets to that oval in your life, shines through that little crack in your life, and goes all the way to the little picture of a Savior born in a manger to remind you you're not dead yet. To give you a little glimpse of hope. And then we begin to sing. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning, great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord, great is your faithfulness. One more time. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faith. This is real. This is real. Like it's actually new every morning. Like, it's not based on what you feel or what you think. It's based on the reality of who he is and who the word says that he is. I want to carry the glory everywhere I go. This is the kind of person I want to be. I want to walk into rooms and go, I know who I am. I know who my God is. And I'm not moving. I am drenched in the glory of God. I, but I didn't get it because I went to a nice prayer meeting. I did it because I learned how to lift weights. And I learned how to handle resistance. And resistance came my way. I looked at it and I laughed. Because what the devil meant for harm, God uses for good. And the pressure that God puts on your life, he has a plan to prosper you and not to. Some of you, I think, are just tired. You've been doing this a while. And you're like, your prayers are more like, please, God, show up. <laughs> like, I have very little steam left. Please. Just please show up. And you know what? He loves those prayers. I think some of you just need to admit you're tired. I think some of you have been plowing ground in this nation for a while. And the good news is the fact that you're tired shows that you're almost to the finish line of what God wants to birth. But don't do in the flesh what you started in the spirit. Don't end and see the tendency is I'm tired now, so I'm going to push harder. And God goes, no, 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 no. No, you will die. You will run out of steam and your life will fall apart. That's why we lose character. Because what we started in the spirit, we finish in the flesh because we get tired. So then we try to press in. No need to press in. Do you get what I'm saying? Please. I mean, obviously there's times for contending. Do you get what I'm saying? We should contend and we should go after God hard. But what I'm saying is when we get to a place where our bodies are physically tired, our minds are not coherent to where they used to be, it's okay. Do you think this pleases God less? Do you think he sees me sitting down resting and being like, wow, I really thought I could count on you. To save the entire planet. <laughs> you know what I love about that piece of art that's in that church that I was talking about? I love that the beauty of it isn't dependent on me. It's dependent on the rising of the sun.
I think some of you are like, yeah, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. You just forgot to admit that you've seen some affliction and you're just really tired. Can I give you now the, the real reason that he pours his glory out though? Why he's building strength? This is what he says in John 17. He says, the glory that, I have, that you have given me, I have given to them that they may be one as you and I are. Hey, can I tell you, that the, so he gives you two things, two things here. He says, first of all, I'm going to give you my glory. I'm giving this to you, right? You're getting the glory. Everybody, amen? We're getting it. But there's two reasons why you're getting it. One, so that we could have actual unity in the church. Glory is always a manifestation, manifests, always manifests in unity. Real glory always manifests in unity. Always. Doesn't mean there's not offense and hurt. You get what I'm saying? But it will always, 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 always. This is what Jesus is praying. He's praying, give them glory so that they will be one. Now, he gives you the model as well. Because some of us are like, yes, let's be one. Let's do an event together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which is good. We can do that. That's usually a starting point. You know, like a wedding is a starting point. It's a party of a starting point. But if you show up to your wedding and don't show up to your marriage, guess what's going to happen? You know what I mean? We can't sustain relationship on events. It has to be relationship. We have to do the work. And so what Jesus said is, Father, make them one as you and I are. Okay, so what is he? The Father, and what is he? So guess what that's called? It's called a family. He says, what if we did real family? What if the entire purpose of glory coming on communities and on cities and on nations is so that we could manifest it in family and every lost person could finally come home? What if the goal is simply home? What if the goal of glory is unity to manifest family so that people that are lost could finally come home? Isn't that the great news of the gospel? Come home. Just come home. No, you're, I know, you're broken, you're a hot mess. God wants you to belong before you start to behave. See, we keep trying to get people to behave. Figure your junk out, figure your junk out, figure your junk out, figure your junk out. Then maybe we'll play with you. <laughs> God does the exact opposite. He says you belong. Because when you start, when you know that you belong, you'll start to behold. Because you'll see a version of God you never saw before. And when you behold, you'll start to believe. Which means you'll start to ask questions that you never asked before. And when you start to believe, you'll finally start to behave. Because you found a model that's worth dying for. And not just worth dying for, but worth living for. Church, I want to see the glory of God and I believe it's coming. And I believe specifically your nation. You're here. Amen? And we're not going to talk about what's happening in my nation. We got other job, okay? We're talking about your nation. You. I declare with my whole heart that I know, that I know that God is looking for moms and dads who will lay their life down for the sake of family. And we'll begin to lead in such a way that we get people along into it. Just get them in the community. I'm telling you guys, get them in your homes. Get them in this room, not for the sake of another meeting, but for the sake of just telling them they're loved. They're going to be messed up. They're going to be broken. They're going to be alcoholics. They're going to be on drugs. Your job is not to figure out how to get them off drugs. Your job is to figure out how to get them to know that they have a family that loves them regardless if they go back to drugs next week. Let them be broken in your midst. You guys, it's insane that we tell everyone God loves you in your brokenness. He loves you right where you are. Don't worry. And then we only put perfect people up on stage and we tell people how perfect we are. Look at how great I am. One day you might be able to be like me. Let's just admit we're jacked up. You guys, I'm jacked up. Like, I am super jealous. I am super offended half the time. It takes a lot to not be offended. Do you understand this? You all know that it's true. I'm, not, I'm susceptible to the same junk. I get super frustrated when things don't go my way. I'm a hyper control freak. It's insane how many times I'm like, yeah, that didn't work out, of course. Where's my faith? You guys would look at me like, where's your faith, bro? And I'd be like, I don't care, bro. 
Because you guys, this is real life with real people who are really just trying to do this well over the course of a lifetime, which is really hard and it's really okay when you don't meet some religious standard that other people have set that actually means nothing. Oh, let the glory come. God, in fact, can we just pray right now that the glory of God would come to show you the areas in your life where you don't have enough strength to carry weight yet. Like, let him show you. Sometimes he lets his glory come in such a really beautiful way to start making breaks and cracks in your life to show you the parts where you just need some help. Does that make sense? Most of the time, we just want glory to come and fix stuff. (laughs) What if his glory came and showed us where stuff is broken and it needs help? You guys, pain is not a bad thing. Do you understand? If I have a pain in my elbow, let's just say for the last day I had a pain in my elbow. I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. I have a pain in my elbow for a day. What if it's still there in a month? What if it's still there in six months? What should I probably do? Go get it checked out because guess what's wrong? There's something wrong in my elbow and I need a professional to take a look at it. Pain points to a problem. What if the areas in your life where you're experiencing the most pain isn't the devil trying to confuse you, but it's God trying to convict you so that you can get healed from it so that you can move forward stronger than you are today? What if some of that pain isn't to be avoided, it's to be walked right into? What if some of your greatest weaknesses are your greatest opportunities? What if some of your greatest fears are your greatest breakthroughs waiting to happen? I, you guys, I'm so happy that we can literally have conversations like this. I'm sorry that I'm usually the one bringing them, but I just like talking about this stuff because I want us to just enjoy the process. Like, do you understand? I'm not saying, oh, well, it's just really mad. God's just going to, there you go. Wow, it was really great of you. That's awesome. Some people might preach that and call it holiness, and I think that's all junk because I think the pleasure of God is in it. This is awesome. Look at the burden that can come off of you when you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all figured out, and you're allowed to go, hey, I'm really not doing great in like five areas. I might need some help. And we weren't afraid of losing position. We weren't afraid of losing relationship because that's the beauty of family amen in a business if you don't do well i can kick you out in a family i'll see you at christmas you know what i'm saying like it'd be like pass the turkey i I don't want to talk to you i just need the turkey you know or whatever you eat here in england smashed peas i like just bring them here (laughs) i would pretty much have smashed peas at every meal if i lived in england so it's all right they're delicious i'm sorry (laughs) so Lord I pray that the weight of your glory would come on every individual in this room right now every individual in this room right now God we just ask we invite your presence to come right now can you just begin to pray just begin to ask him just to come show himself right now just ask in your own words don't wait for somebody to pray for you just God let your glory come on my life right now and show me the places where I still need to build strength Just ask him. Open your mouth. There's no such thing as silent prayer. It doesn't mean you have to be loud. But silent prayer is called meditation. We're not doing that right now. We're actually doing doing petition. We're actually saying, God, come. Come. I need you to come and break in. I need you to show me. I need you to show me right now, God. Show me right now. In Jesus' name, I'm asking that you would show me the places of weakness in my own heart, in my own life, in my own walk with you. Not so that you could come and Push me down, but so that the weight could come of your glory, so I could learn how to carry more of your presence. I mean, who in this room wants to carry more? How many of us want to carry more? Then ask. God, show me. Show me. Show me the places I'm tired so I could start to take rest. I think some of you just need to admit to yourself and to the people around you, you need a nap. (laughs) You just need a break. It's okay to be tired. It's okay to be tired. (laughs) I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about It's all about you, Jesus. 
King of endless words No one could express How much you deserve Oh, I'm weak and poor All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my own. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you. King of endless worth. King of endless worth. No one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor. Though I'm weak and poor, God, all I have is yours. Every single breath, I'll bring you more, Lord. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required, Lord. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. Yeah, I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, God. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about. It's all about you. I'll bring you more. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself. It's not what you It's all about you, Jesus. Old things have passed away. Your love has stayed. The same, your constant grace remains the course. Things that we thought were dead are breathing in life again. You cause your sun to shine on dark. Took our hands and 
Come to the fountain and dip your heart in the streams of life, the pain and the sorrow. Be washed away in the waves of His mercy. As deep cries out to deep, we sing on Lord Jesus. Sing on Lord Jesus. We sing.
Oh. 